while back when I first bought this car, the rear quarter panel was smashed in right where the tail light and uh, rear hatch sat. The dude before the guy that had this one, he like drifted into a, a pole. So there's that. I actually recorded fixing it, but I never felt a need to upload it until recently because someone just messaged me and asked if I could edit the video for it and actually put that up because they're dealing with the same thing. So that's pretty much what this is. And let me note that for this car specifically, I knew that eventually I was gonna tube the rear end and I knew that immediately I was gonna throw over fenders on the car. So when I was fixing this, my main thing was just to get the tail light and hatch area looking straight, but underneath it, which is where the over fender is gonna cover, it's not like I, I didn't need it to be exactly perfect. So just keep that in mind when you see the end result. Well, first thing I attempted was just smashing the dent out with a hammer and a two by four. Then I decided to get an air hammer and actually weld on a piece of steel to the end of the air hammer so it's a little bit more of a doll shape and then use the air hammer to hammer out the dents. But honestly that didn't seem to work out that well and the 2x4 and hammer were way more effective. So what I'm going to do is just weld this piece, piece of a uh, half inch uh, DOM tubing onto the end of this so that way hopefully we can hammer without doing uh, damage. And at this time I decided to call it quits with the whole smashing it out method after seeing how bad it still was, even with the over fender bolted on and the taillight on, the entire area around the taillight was still smashed in quite a bit. And that taillight area really needs like sharp crisp lines over there. So I went to plan B. Plan B was to cut out the messed up section on my car and then go and weld in a nice clean piece from another car, which is exactly what I did and it actually turned out pretty good. Okay, so I have the quarter panel marked up now. So I have it going with this like seam over here because that's just easier to follow and I can line that up better on both the pieces. Then it goes straight over here to a point where I marked how far it was over here. I replicated everything on this side. Same with down here. It goes to this line, then it follows this bottom marker. That's what I'm gonna cut against. And then I'm gonna lead up over here on the edge because this is also smashed in and this is a good um, point where I know where to cut. And then I'm gonna come straight up here and then I'll just cut along this seam again, cut along this seam come across all the way here under this, go to this line and just take this straight up and then I'll have some type of line over here that I'm gonna cut. Once I cut it across, then I'll come up onto this section, cut up, go across this, cut, then I'll go around this rounded section and just come straight across. So I do realize that it is kind of confusing all those lines I took, but this seems like the best way in order to line them up with both panels because a lot of those were reference marks between layers. 
On top of that, there's just some sections I just didn't want to cut into because I know that would be, you know, cutting too much. And of course I have the main line over here matched up on this side. All the lower stuff isn't quite done yet and that's kind of just because it's going to get trimmed down once this section is cut out and then I can kind of compare it. But that main line really needs to be quite accurate. Now before I start cutting it, I'm just going to explain why I'm only doing this section instead of replacing the whole quarter panel. And this is a lot easier to do than, you know, replacing the whole entire quarter panel. And on top of that, this is all going to get cut up and have holes drilled in it for the over fenders to sit on top. So really I'd just be swapping in a whole entire clean quarter panel piece just so I can cut it up and then drill holes in it, which again doesn't really make any sense because you're swapping in a good piece just to make it worse. So I'd rather just keep this here, cut out what exactly I need to get my taillights to sit right, and then uh, yeah, just go cut up whatever I need to cut up. Angle grinder, cut off this. Kind of the rough cut we have now not a hundred percent as you can see not following the line over here or really over here the reasoning behind that is i'd rather keep it extra for right now and then trim it down to shape perfectly and then also shape that one perfectly so that way when they line up it's super super close also quick tip the angle grinder takes off about this th much thickness of the material when you're cutting so if you cut on this side of the line last time, okay, then this time you want to cut on this side of the line so it doesn't dig into the material you're keeping, so that way it lines up perfectly fine. You may or may not get that, but yeah. Okay, here's the good piece now. All right, so it probably looked like I skipped a lot, but all I did was basically just trim this piece and then keep continuing to trim it to make it to fit. I have the taillight bolted up, and so that's to give it a sort of measurement on where it's supposed to go. So that has a bolt here, bolt there, two bolts onto this piece, which is the replacement piece. I have the weather stripping in place as well because that keeps it all in the same line and continues it where it's supposed to go, so that's a big help. And so now it's kind of just a matter of getting it up to where it's supposed to fit. As you can tell, this needs to be flush with this. So you kind of push it over. It's just sit roughly like right there. Match it up with the line. There's quite a big gap over here, but really that's not a big deal because the overfender is going to be covering it, although it really should be a smaller gap. I will be bridging it with weld anyways and then grinding it flat, so you shouldn't even be able to tell the difference. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it right there. I'm just going to tack it in in a few places, and then after that, I get my overfender and toss it on and make sure it just fits well enough. And then after that, I'll start bridging all the gaps and getting it to fit properly. First, you got the usual prep with acetone. Welders on 3.5 for volts, 40 for wire speed. Oh, wow, this is nice. This is nice. Well, we're pretty much Formula D ready right now. I mean, woohoo! That's dope. So dope. Okay, so you can see I welded it. See how these two are level right here? They were matching up and I knew it was going to be flush. So I just tacked this in place, then pushed this piece in, tacked it, pushed it in again, made sure to tack it. And that's kind of like what I'm going to do throughout the whole thing. Um, yeah, as you can tell, this thing is pretty huge gap, but I'll uh, push that out, maybe put a strip of metal in between, fill it up, it'll be good. Not bad at all. I think it's about the same as the other side now. Really? I think, I think. Spaced it. Let's see, let's see. Let's see. Oh! Oh! Oh, we freaking railed that, bro. Dude, we, oh my goodness. That's straight up, look how even that looks. Okay, so we welded it over here, and then we had uh, Nikita go ahead and push on the car, 
so that way we can weld the gap over here and that way it keeps it nice and consistent so we got a nice and consistent gap over here and now we can just fill in the weld or fill in the gap okay so you can see there's all these tacks everywhere that's holding everything into place So now I'm gonna go through everything and then start actually doing continuous welds over throughout here and then bridge everything. And then once all this is welded, then I can just take a flap disc on a grinder, grind it down, make everything flush, and then uh, yeah, primer it and we're done. Okay, so here's pretty much the overview. This needs to be just one touch up over here. All this is just super blobbed on, and the reason being is so we can sand it down and make it flat rather than having a whole bunch of low spots. So we have all these welds over here now, and of course we need the over fenders to sit flush, so we're just going to grind these down, and uh, that way it'll be a nice smooth panel. So as you can tell, for the most part, the welds are sanded down. There's some areas that still need to get filled in. And of course, I need to take a Dremel and uh, better grind down all of these areas. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, from the back side, you can see everything is like fully penetrated from the back. So when we paint it, we'll have to be painting the inside as well as the outside to prevent rust. But now since this is pretty much roughed up and done, we can move on to doing the over fender and get that lined up. It's as simple as that. It could be a little bit cleaner, obviously, if you took your time. And then, of course, you went and did body filler on top of it. But like I said, the rear end's going to get tubed. And right now, it has an over fender covering it. So hundreds of people have seen this car in person. And there's tons of videos on this car. And no one has ever noticed that the whole rear section was actually replaced. I hope this video helped you guys. You can take away something from this video and apply it to your own car. Be sure to check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash offbeatgarage, as well as go to offbeatgarage.com and check out all of our merchandise that we have for sale. And yeah, I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.